Synthetic cannabis hit the scene in Australia around 2008, giving users a chance to feel the sensations of marijuana without breaking the law. But all that changed in 2011, when the government banned the drugs and we started to see just how dangerous they can really be. At NickPick, we realised we wanted to know more about synthetic cannabis. And once we'd said we wanted to know, we were flooded with stories of other people who wanted to know more too. In this film, we're going to dive headfirst into synthetic cannabis, what it is, who's taking it, and what kinds of experiences they're having, straight from the horse's mouth. And then, we'll back this up with some useful information from key experts. Synthetic cannabis. I have no idea what it is, me. I have no idea. But yeah, like I said, it was traumatic for us to watch, so I can only imagine what he went through. Yeah, he wasn't responsive, and that was after one, one little puff. It was, I actually thought he was going to die. We'll find out what the difference is between cannabis and synthetic cannabis, revisit the law about these drugs, and hear first-hand stories from people who have experienced it. So let's kick off. Candice is a 27-year-old woman living in Sydney. She's done her fair share of dabbling in drugs, but when it comes to synthetic cannabis, she tells other young people to steer clear of it. And what was it like the first time you used it? Um, really bad, actually. I'd actually yeah. been on a break from normal weed for nine months, so I had probably two cones and I was yeah, nearly dead. So I ended up passing out and then I woke up the next morning still stoned at like 9.30 in the morning and I fell over and it was, yeah. I didn't go to school and I worked that day and then I just continued to smoke the rest until it was gone and then started smoking proper weed. Wow. Can you give us an idea of kind of what it feels like and what happens when you have a, an experience on synthetic cannabis? If you have a good one, a good experience, it's like being on a really nice, mellow strain of normal weed. Um, yeah, it's just calm. You can still function a lot on it. Um, you still get munchies and that, but it's just a different, bit weaker than normal weed. But if you get a bad experience, um, yeah. I've had one cone before and it has literally felt like in my head it just goes round and stops and round. And it's been like that for like up to an hour straight. Um, to the point where I can't open my eyes or anything, any light. It's almost like the feeling of a migraine, but like your red lining, like your brain's gonna kind of pop out of your skull. Yeah, yeah. Why, why would you try it again when it was a bad experience um, the first time? I'm like a lot of people, well not a lot of people, there are other people out there like me. I will, even if it is a bad high, I'll still take it. Um, I, more after the high of anything, like even if it's bad or good, so. So what makes you want to push those boundaries? Um, what are the boundaries? Personally, I just like, yeah, not being in this world and I don't care what I do, how I look, how I act, um, just as long as, yeah, I feel like I'm not in this world and I'm not in reality, then I'm happy. Um, mm whether it might be doing it five times a day or once a week, generally I try and do it at least every day. But um, yeah, I just, ever since I was little, I've always had a weird feeling inside of me and drugs is one thing that tends to, yeah, I'm always chasing that high feeling. Yeah. And would you, you know, use it again? Have you, um, if it was legal? <laughs> Yes, I would say that I would use it again, only because I have had good ones and I have had bad ones and I haven't died yet, so until I have a real serious hospitalisation, then I'll continue to use. Nikki is a woman in her mid-twenties who lives on the New South Wales coast. Back when synthetic cannabis was legal, she had a first experience of the real dangers of the drug and she didn't even have to try it herself. Nikki's partner at the time was looking for a quick and easy sleep remedy after completing a series of tough night shifts. His mate suggested he try synthetic cannabis, something he said would do the job and deliver a mellow high. Unfortunately for Nikki's boyfriend, a mellow high was the last thing he got. Um, a guy from work had told him about it, just said it might help him sleep. 
and he bought it from a tobacconist just over the counter um, and we got home and yeah I went to bed he sat outside in a couple of minutes he only had the smallest bit um, he kind of staggered into the room he realized he was like blacking out um, he went into a full seizure on the floor his airway got blocked so he was lying on his back so if I wasn't there he would have choked on his vomit so I had to clear his airway and um, I called Triple O after I realised that it was really serious um, and they took for like forever to get there. Um, yeah, he wasn't responsive and that was after one, one little puff. It was, I actually thought he was going to die. It was so scary. So what made him try it in the first place? Was it? Um, someone, he does shift work and he's a really bad sleeper and basically right. someone had just told him you can get it from this tobacconist. He thought it might just help him sleep or just help him mellow out before bed. Yeah. So it's so not even something that he normally does, but it, like I saw the packaging and I smelt it and it actually just smells like herbal tea. You'd think it would just right. be something that... So not like cannabis? No, like no, cannabis. no. And I think the thought that you can buy it, like, or you could buy it from the shop, people think it's not just not as bad or not as dangerous. But that was just an instant reaction, and it was, it was terrifying. Yeah, and um, so the packaging—it it just kind of looked yeah, it looked from a like a, like a flavored tobacco, like it was in a little sealable, colorful pack. Like. So, you, so he just expected this to be kind of okay. Yep, yep, just something to help him maybe relax or sleep, just something to try, I guess, because. But um, I've only known of two people to try it and it was a bad situation both times. Really? Seizures yeah. and unconscious. And this was just after one puff of it? Yeah, just one or two. Very scary. Any sort of long-term effects, do you know? No, but he's Some never had a seizure or anything like that before, so it was, wasn't something, and I hadn't actually seen it before as well. Yeah. So it was everything from his feet and toes curling over, just not breathing. Mm. Not how responsive. Did, how did you feel? You must have been I, beside yourself. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty hysterical. The guy, um, and the worst part, one of the worst parts about it was when I was on the phone to Triple O, he, um, the guy on the phone told me that he didn't mean, doesn't want to scare me, but two people, two men died from this last week. That's what he told me while I was waiting for the ambulance, mm. <laughs> which is not really something you say to someone in an emergency situation. Um, I actually thought I was going to lose him and I was shaken up for days. Yeah. Because synthetic cannabis is made up of unknown chemicals, users can suffer a range of negative side effects from anxiety and paranoia through to seizures, heart attack and even death. All too familiar with side effects like these is Dr Kate Sellers who works in the emergency department at a Sydney hospital. So what kind of symptoms are you seeing synthetic cannabis users coming into emergency with? Well, we're commonly seeing people coming in with agitation, uh, they can come in with vomiting, uh, and in worst cases things like psychosis and seizures. The most worrying problem with seizures is that it has big uh, effects on patients' lifestyle. We've had to tell people that they can't drive following a seizure and obviously that has impacts on people's ability to work. For any length of time then? They can't drive? For well for a minimum, for a, uh, a private uh, licence, a minimum of six months and on commercial drivers a longer period of time. One patient we had was a middle-aged man who was a truck driver who used synthetic cannabis um, specifically so he wouldn't get caught out on drug screen by his employer. He had a seizure and a result of that he wasn't able to work anymore. So how serious can the effects of taking synthetic cannabis really be? Well, very serious. There have been a couple of deaths associated with smoking synthetic cannabis that I'm aware of in Queensland and in Victoria. Um, and certainly, uh, as I said, cases of renal failure, uh, seizures and psychosis. So those are very serious side effects. And can people experience long-term damage? Well, we just don't know. These substances have only been on the black market for about the last 10 years, and we've got no idea in, in some cases what the substances even are. So it's very difficult to predict what the long-term consequences may be. So what should people do if they or a friend are having a really bad reaction to synthetic cannabis? Well, the first thing would be to obviously stop smoking and step outside to get some fresh air. 
most abnormal, most bad reactions will resolve in a short period of time. So if you're feeling a little bit nauseous or anxious, just wait and see how it progresses. But certainly if you're having a severe reaction, if there's agitation, psychosis or a seizure, then you must call an ambulance and come straight away to the emergency department. So have you ever seen synthetic cannabis? Do you know what it looks like? Yes, actually. I had a patient leave some here in the department not that long ago. I've got it over here Can if you'd like. Yeah. So I was interested to find out what the synthetic cannabis looked like as well. And a mm. patient left this behind, um, charmingly named uh, Minga. It's really just some sort of plant material that's been sprayed with chemicals. And you can see and smell this nasty brown chemical um, that's been sprayed on. People think that they're smoking a, a natural, you know, herbal product, but it's not at all. It's just no. a, a dirty chemical that's been sprayed on some <coughs> herbs. So this is the packaging? Yes, and this mm. patient bought it uh, from a petrol station, uh, which he believed to be quite legal at the time. Hmm. <laughs> the University of New South Wales NICPIC is an organisation focused on finding out about cannabis and in this case synthetic cannabis. It runs annual awareness and information campaigns and aims to make information readily available to whoever needs it. Matt, who looks after social media surveys with researchers and who just happens to be a colleague of mine, worked to find out more about people's experience on synthetics in 2015 through an online survey that reached over a thousand previous users. So Matt, tell us about this survey. It was an online survey of 1,700 people aged between 18 and 25 years of age and it was actually the largest survey um, of its kind conducted in Australia. So of the 1,700, how many had taken synthetic cannabis? Uh, of, of those people surveyed, there was 1,200 who had tried a synthetic drug of some kind, whether that be bath salts, uh, party pills or herbal highs. Uh, but 92% of that 1,200 had tried synthetic cannabis. Right. And what were the most surprising findings? What we found was the, the most interesting responses were when we asked people to share their experiences when using synthetic drugs. Um, we uncovered a range of different stories. Um, people having hallucinations, um, violent episodes. One guy described wrestling his grandmother UFC style under, while he was under the influence. Um, but the most surprising of all was the amount of people who felt like they were going to die while they were using, the, using synthetic cannabis. Um, and that was about 10% of respondents who all felt that way. Mm. And did people say that they wanted to try it again after having those kind of experiences? Well, interestingly, no. Um, th three quarters of respondents actually said after trying the drug once that they would never try it again. So you said 1,200 out of the 1,700 have actually taken synthetic cannabis. It seems high. Well, actually, uh, that's not representative of the larger, larger population. This survey was targeted towards users of synthetic drugs. Because synthetic cannabis is a new drug, something we rarely consider is that it might be addictive. Certainly, this is something that was picked up in the NickPick survey, where a lot of people told stories about getting addicted really quickly and finding it difficult to quit. A big part of these stories was also the effects it starts having on people's lives when they use it heavily and regularly. Adam, a tradie from Eastern Sydney, has tried synthetic cannabis but says it's not a drug for him after he saw his close friend experience some serious mental and physical side effects. So how did your friend start using synthetic cannabis and what were his first experiences like? Okay, so basically around the time that it first came out and there was a lot of hype about it, um, we had a few other friends that were using it and it was just easy to get a hold of for him. So it was at a lot of tobacconists and stuff in the local area and it was a lot cheaper than buying actual cannabis as well. So he thought, you know, I'll give it a go. And unfortunately for him, it, yeah, it wasn't a good choice because he just ended up spending all his money on it, um, getting really addicted to it because he said that he used to hallucinate and he's also, you know, done stuff like mushrooms and other psychedelics. So that was, you know, his kind of thing. Um, but 
you could tell from the outside perspective that it wasn't it wasn't clean it wasn't like he used to get on it say we were all around at a party or something and he would be having the time of his life in his head but on the outside he was you know stumbling around falling all over people one time he fell through a coffee table big glass coffee table um that was pretty bad we had to take him to the hospital after that um but yeah and even when we got there they were asking you know what what did he take why was he like this and we said to him synthetic cannabis but there's nothing they could do because they don't know anything about it so mm. it was it was hard to see him go through it and it's just something like this it's not like i said it's not like a normal what you would call a normal drug it's yeah it's man-made so therefore it's made to be as potent as possible that's what they sell it for that's what they want so how long did it take before he felt that he wasn't just using this for fun you know he kind of needed it um to be honest it was us that made that choice for him um he got that out of control he was living with a friend of mine at the time and he was not paying rent and stuff like that he'd go for weeks without eating because he didn't have money um and we just stepped in and said this is enough like he didn't yeah he didn't see it as a problem like how often was he taking it oh uh, all day every day um, right so he would basically wake up in the morning and start smoking right then and there um from then it'd be a couple of hours he'd be out of it and then come back down do it again and again and it mm. wasn't until like he started really um amping up the potency that it really became like an issue for him because like I said, the time that he fell through the coffee table was the time that he tried one of the most potent ones he could get his hands on and it absolutely like blew him away. Like it was just, like I said, he reckons he enjoyed it, but I don't understand how you can enjoy it from falling through a glass coffee table. So mm. it's, yeah, it's like I said, it was just horrible to see him go through all that kind of stuff. And so. there was something that kept him yeah, well, that's taking it. it. He just wanted that high. Like I said, from the inside, he thought it was a good thing, but he doesn't. He, yeah, he didn't realize the damage it was doing to him. In reality, basically, in yeah. his world, it was fun. In reality, he's yeah. Y and you could recognize exactly. that that it wasn't. Professor Jan Copeland has been working in cannabis research for more than 20 years and is renowned in the field. As the director of NICPIC, she's seen it all when it comes to marijuana, but when synthetic cannabis hit the streets around 2007-8, she, like everyone else, wanted to know more. Anything that's being marketed as cannabis certainly gets my attention, particularly when um, back when it first came out, it was being um, spoken about as being legal and also as, as being safe. And how is it actually different from cannabis? Well, it doesn't contain the same um, active ingredient of uh, tetrahydrocannabinol. It was developed in uh, pharmaceutical laboratories originally in about five places pretty much at the same time. Um, and these were chemicals developed um, so they could look in rats' brains and discover how the cannabis system in our brains might work so they could perhaps develop some pharmaceutical drugs as a result. But uh, unfortunately, it got out into uh, the wider world and it's now being developed in clandestine laboratories where they often tweak the chemicals a little bit so they're not quite the same and they hope then that they won't be detected by law enforcement uh, as they cross borders. Does it work in the same way as cannabis? It does work in a, a similar way in that it uh, activates the same receptor system in the body. Unfortunately, it uh, is much more potent and it binds much more strongly. And so people get much more um, strong effects and they're quite unpredictable. It also seems to involve some of the other receptor systems in the brain and we never know exactly what the chemicals are to be able to study them in depth. But we think this might be responsible for people experiencing some very intense reactions and some physical reactions which unfortunately have made people very ill and uh, in some cases um, has been fatal. And what do we know about long-term effects? Well, the short answer is nothing. These group of drugs have only been around for about 10 years, the very oldest of them, and uh, the group is evolving constantly. So we have absolutely no idea what the long-term effects of these drugs might be. Um, probably some that are similar to cannabis, some that might be similar to opiates, and uh, others um, as related to smoking 
any kind of chemical, particularly the acetone that's mixed in with these drugs, um, suggests that there may well be quite serious long-term effects, but we have no evidence at all. The National Cannabis Information and Helpline is a service provided in partnership by NICPIC and Lifeline. It gives people the chance to call and get some advice or support if they or someone they know is having trouble with cannabis or synthetic cannabis use. Though synthetic cannabis is not used widely, calls to the helpline have increased, with users calling for help with frighteningly intense highs and suicidal thoughts. What, part of, what kind of people call the helpline? Uh, people call who are regular users of cannabis or casual users. Um, or people who are impacted by another person's use. And uh, we also receive calls from professionals um, who are working with people uh, who are using cannabis. Okay, and have you found many people having problems more recently with synthetic cannabis? On average, we probably receive about two calls a week. And what sort of problems are they finding? What are they, have, you know, what are they calling about? Yeah, they um, report anything from a very intense high that they find quite frightening, where they feel out of control, very agitated, anxious. Um, people report uh, finding it harder to quit, that the withdrawal symptoms are more intense. Um, people talk about the impact it has on their mental health, so increasing the symptoms of anxiety, um, depression, cognitive dysfunction, like memory loss, hallucinations, um, paranoid thinking. Um, people report quite um, significant personality changes, so you know people becoming more withdrawn. A very common theme that people talk about is being very uh, agitated and aggressive. You know, there's sort of angry surges, feeling on edge. The law in Australia around the use of synthetic cannabis has been a bit confusing over recent years, as the drug was banned in 2011. But manufacturers keep changing the ingredients so people can get away with buying, selling and using it. Detective Superintendent Tony Cook works with an urban police force in New South Wales and confirms that despite what some people may think, having synthetic cannabis on you will land you in trouble. Tell us about the law in Australia when it comes to synthetic cannabis. Look, law in relation to synthetic cannabis and, and a range of synthetic drugs has, has developed over a number of years. In um, 2012, seven of the synthetic cannabinoids were in fact added to the Drugs Misuse and Trafficking Act in Schedule 1, effectively making those um, um, compounds prohibited drugs no different to heroin or cocaine. The laws then evolved. Um, clearly there's a, there's a problematic force in that these are developed by people who are, are making different comp compounds and the law has evolved to cater for those eventualities. Specifically in New South Wales, um, any of these substances, whether they're um, specified within the schedule or not, but um, have a psychoactive effect, are effectively illegal. And do you come across many people who still think it's legal? Look, in the early stages, I think there was some um, perhaps mischievousness, realistically, in relation to it. Uh, the bottom line is, when this came out, it was sold as a legal high. Well, that was never realistically the case. And very quickly, those, as we mentioned, those seven compounds were added to the schedule. And pretty quickly following that, um, legislation was changed to, to prevent the sale of these psychoactive substances. So we don't come across many people um, who believe it's still legal. And in effect, the legislation has been very, very effective. So would you let them go if they think it's legal or if they don't know it's illegal? Well no, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> people who are in possession of these substances uh, where they are illegal you know, can expect to be prosecuted and I mean as I said there's been significant uh, public um, debate, discussion, um, sometimes over the most tragic of circumstances where it's very clear uh, what the law is in relation to this. And you know what, at the end of the day, um, the determination is a matter for the court. From a policing perspective, if people are in possession of these uh, drugs, or more importantly, if people are supplying uh, these substances, they can expect to be prosecuted. 
Anna is a youth off the street psychologist who has a unique perspective on synthetic cannabis after witnessing its effects on several of the young people she helps care for. Every day she sees kids who have been affected by drugs, some from a very young age, and works to encourage them to turn their lives around. So have you worked with kids who have used synthetic cannabis? Yeah, um, I've worked directly with them um, through the crisis um, refuge and I also work with them um, in counselling intervention. Mm. So how are they getting it when Look, they're so young? When it was legal, it was just a matter of going to a tobacconist and getting it that way. Now that it's become illegal, a lot of kids have social networks on the street and so they know where to get their substances and it's the same with synthetic cannabis. Someone knows someone who's using it and when they get their hands on it, they, they share it amongst their circle of friends. And what sort of ages are we talking about here? Oh look, because uh, I work with um, 15 to 25 year olds, um, those are the ages that I work with but I have heard of young, younger kids from 12. Um, able to get it through friends. Mm. Can you tell us about any of the experiences that they've been having? Yeah. Look, the kids describe it as something um, more potent and stronger than the normal cannabis. Um, some of the experiences I've um, had young people tell me about is that they've wanted to, to run and they're not able to run. They're on the floor trying to use their legs to, 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 to run away. Um, I've had another kid end up in hospital um, having seizures and, and heart palpitations. Um, other experiences are where they see things that aren't really there um, and it, it's a lot more potent. Right. And so have you witnessed any of these things? Or? Yeah. Um, yeah. Being at the refuge, um, we've had, I mean, I have an office in the refuge and kids, young people come and go and the aggressive behaviours and destroying property, um, I've been able to see that firsthand. Um, they have a shorter fuse, it doesn't take much to escalate um, or for them to go over the edge and the behaviours are quite aggressive and, and become violent. Mm. And would you say to anyone who was thinking about taking synthetic cannabis, what, what do you, what would you, your advice be? Look, it's, it's a relatively new substance and there's not enough research on it, on, on what happens longer term. Um, but what we do know is that it can kill people. It has got deaths associated with, with the use. Um, you know, teenagers' brains are still developing, so, you know, to add something that is so potent and so toxic um, could cause so much damage, and you can't predict that. So I would be, look, stay clear, um, it's not worth it. It's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a, a research chemical made in the, in, in the lab, and it's not meant for human consumption, it's meant to, to do with research. Um, it's just, it's found its way on the streets, and I'd say stay clear. So. Uh, have any of the kids become addicted to this synthetic cannabis? Yeah, yeah look, they do. Um, because um, a lot of kids are chasing a t the THC, the high in, in substances, um, it is quite addictive. Um, so we're talking about physically withdrawing. Kids can throw up when they wake up in the morning and they don't have their fix. Um, they become aggressive, um, agitated. Um, I had a kid the other day was she was punching a couch because she needed a fix. So we do see that a lot of kids do become addictive, um, addicted to it. In terms of what it does for their lives, a lot of kids can't maintain school, um, jobs not an option, um, they can't maintain uh, friendships or relationships or it's based around their drug use. So it, it does have long term detrimental effects um, and withdrawal and, and cravings come hand in hand with it. Yeah. Even though it was legal before 2011, use of synthetic cannabis has never really taken off in Australia. The latest Drug Strategy Household Report says the rate of use is around 2 or 3%. Such a low rate of use might sound like a good thing, and it is, but when a drug has side effects like the ones we've learned about, the hallucinations, paranoia, addiction, suicidal thoughts and several recent deaths, even 2% is still too many. Synthetic cannabis is still new, it's changing all the time, it's unpredictable, there's not much research around it. If you take synthetic cannabis when you're young, it might affect you well into the future, we just don't know. Is it really worth taking that risk?